another episode of Dark Oats Game Dev Cookbook. It's a pleasure to have you here again. In the last tutorial, we talked about Fong shading. And now you know how to apply this basic illumination model to a sphere object to make it look real and cool. In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about reflections and we're going to try to make our sphere look like a mirror. So for everyone who haven't watched this tutorial so far, uh, I strongly advise that you go through the previous parts. If not, that's fine. This tutorial is going to be kind of a standalone edition anyway. So uh, go down there to the description and you can just open up uh, the shader toy code I provided for you from the last tutorial and just start building on top of that, you'll be fine. So when you start thinking about uh, the, ta the task we have in this tutorial uh, and the mirror itself, uh, I mean, what is a mirror? It, like the perfect mirror, reflects everything uh, that um, falls into it, right? Uh, in this scenario, if you want to make this sphere like a perfect mirror, uh, there's not really much you can do with that because the, the whole scene right now is just pitch black. It's just one big void. So the first thing we want to do to actually start working with any sort of reflections, we want to make this uh, scene. We want to make something around it. Uh, what we usually do for these kinds of things is uh, we're going to be using uh, something called a cube map uh, to simulate this sort of environment. Uh, a cube map in OpenGL uh, is it's basically a box that has textures glued on each side, as you can see in this picture over here. Imagine you are this circle or sphere over here, and you're looking towards, uh, like you're looking around. Everywhere you look, you look towards a specific face of this cube. Imagine then using this these textures or these six pictures or like imagine doing origami with it around this cube and just sticking these textures in this cube uh, around it if you looked towards any face in that cube right now uh, you would see a specific you would see a texture on each side uh, i mean it, it was still like it would still be in a box right but it would look like you're in this environment a big environment um, and that's pretty much what the cube map is. OpenGL provides an out-of-the-box solution for this. You're going to see in just a moment. But basically imagine uh, yourself as being stuck in the middle of this huge uh, cube and everything around uh, yourself, everything you see, are these textures. Uh, in games development, usually the thing that uses cube box uh, is uh, sky. Uh, and it's you, you'll also uh, notice you, you'll find it on the internet as a skybox as well. It's pretty common to use that wording also. Uh, so let's try to do that. We want to have this cube map around us in our scene so our sphere can reflect that cube map. In Shader Toy, uh, there are these four channels or interfaces down here that you can use. Uh, these enable you to pull a specific texture or any sort of asset, cube map, volume, uh, audio, a video, uh, so you can use it directly in your shader. Uh, so what we're gonna do right now, you just click on this channel, this dialog opens up, and you'll notice that you can choose a lot of things here. We're gonna go to cube maps, and these six are like the pre-made cube maps that you can use for your uh, for your shader. Uh, I usually stick with this uh, gallery or basilica one, uh, I really like them. Uh, maybe, maybe let's try let's try the basilic one. Actually, I I really like this one. So click on it. It should pop up here. Boom. And now, what what do you do? So let's go back here. The only thing you need to know when dealing with cube maps in OpenGL is a direction. As I said, just imagine yourself. Uh, being stuck in uh, uh, inside of this box on this center and looking all over the place uh, and this direction is what's going to determine which pixel is going to get drawn basically so OpenGL is going to do this for you uh, let's try drawing uh, our cube box cube map uh, without the sphere right now just to see how that works so if we do wet three color or col as we used it before there is this function called texture and then we say, let's take the texture from i channel zero. And uh, we use a 
direction we calculated it for and we use RGB values here. And th that gives you this. This is obviously part of the cube box, right? It looks pretty similar as in the picture. This, the picture is just a representation of one of the directions, right? This is our direction right now. Uh, it's blurry. So obviously your camera zoom is not really good. Uh, and there is a problem with our zoom, or actually it's more of a wording problem. And in the first lesson, I said something like, this is kind of a zoom. And I had a reason for that kind of, uh, and now we got to explain this reason at this point. Uh, but I'm going to give you a chance to pause the video and figure out what happens. Let's say we change the zoom from one to two. Uh, why, uh, why the zoom actually, why, why we actually zoom out when we increase this zoom level. So pause the video now, uh, try to sort it out on your own. It's more of a wording problem than a logical problem but the wording, wording problem is causing this logical confusion. So try to sort it out uh, and yeah. So if you manage to solve it on your own, cool, uh, but I'm gonna solve it for you right now. So our zoom is not a zoom technically here. We have the camera position, which is 3.5. We said, let's say this is a Z axis, like this one. Uh, we said, whatever is in front of the camera, so pointing this way, uh, the more you go further from it, the lesser the number becomes. Or if you're at 3.5 Z with your camera here, this is something lower or lesser than 3.5. It's zero or minus one or 2.5, right? Currently, if you check our calculations for the camera, we have this calculation where we say, well, our direction is no, no, no. We have this UV camera zoom. We said this is our canvas. Uh, where it lies. So you had this camera zoom, which is basically what? It's it's the Z position of your canvas. It's not really uh, any sort of zoom. It's 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 a, it's a position, and that is the problem. Uh, the problem is that it's not a zoom. It's a canvas position. Uh, so let's change this position. We're just gonna change the name now, and then explain more. Uh, as soon as I change the names, cool. And now our canvas position is 2.0 uh, Z in this case. As we change it, let's put it back to one. Uh, so it's gonna actually, now it's, it's zoom, we're gonna zoom in, it shouldn't, right? Uh, why this happens? Because we were, uh, in this scenario, we were uh, at, so we were at two. So two, this is 3.5, this is two. Right? And then we jumped from two to one, which is further than from uh, the, from the camera than two. And all of a sudden, I'm confused. Like, why, why is it like why is it zooming um, uh, in when I decrease the zoom? Well, of course, the canvas as 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 further as it moves from the camera, the rays are gonna be uh, shooting more straight, and you're gonna be uh, uh, zooming in. So that's that's the way it works. So if you wanna zoom out, we just need to um, uh, pull the canvas closer to the camera, which is on 3.5. We can easily make the zoom work with with some basic math over here and just have a zoom variable. Uh, but let's let's just do this for now. So if we bring this closer to 3.5, we get this uh, situation where, like, look at this. If you're super close to the camera, your FOV is crazy. 3.5. Not to really, not really the thing we want to do, but we want to do maybe three points four. Look at this, three point one. I can do three just for for the sake of it. So once we did this right now, we can go back uh, here and start playing with our sphere so right now our sphere is not being rendered because obviously we we just wrote this line that does this uh, texturing thing uh, and if we look at the ray tracing function uh, so we need to definitely we need we need to ray trace right uh, if we look at the ray trace function if we don't hit the sphere we return the black value so we can just do this instead and now we see the sphere and uh, it's funny because the sphere right now is super far because our zoom is uh, completely different the, at this point. So we can just draw the 
um, draw the sphere a bit closer. Let's make it four. Four is to to not not really what I want. Um, yeah, two point six looks okay-ish, right? Not 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 too bad. Um, so let's go. Yeah, our our FOV is. I don't like the FOV right now. Field of view right now. So so let's just maybe make it a bit more. Uh, like this yeah and now I'll just move the sphere a bit like this it looks better and also decrease the specular component a bit Cool. Uh, and now let's do, dig into reflections. So now we have this cube map sorted and we can reflect something around us. And that's super nice. Uh, we might also, uh, let's not change the sphere color for now, uh, but we, we might want to change it just for the sake of it. So we change it up a bit. Um, let's see, we want to reflect now. We want to reflect from the surface of this sphere. So it looks like a mirror. And the way we do that, is that if you look at, at this picture I just drew uh, like a few minutes ago, um, what we want to do is this is our basic intersect goal. When we intersect the sphere and when we determine the color we're going to draw on the, sc on the screen. So the, we say, yeah, we intersected with the sphere and draw the color of the sphere. And instead of drawing the color of the sphere directly and doing that funk calculations, uh, thing uh, we're gonna do something different or just go one step further we're gonna reflect the ray that uh, we used to intersect with this sphere and also see what that reflected ray interacts with so let's say if we had this object over here and we reflected this ray from this sphere uh, towards that object uh, if this sphere was a perfect mirror we would see this object here right it would be like here as we would be seeing it right um, and, and, and that makes sense. So how, how do we do that coding-wise? Coding-wise, it's easy because GLSL already provides us with functions like to reflect and so on. And we already have, I think we already have all the necessary parameters to do so. Uh, so here, before doing any calculations with lighting and so on, let's first determine what the color we want to display there really is. Is it the color of the sphere or it's some sort of a mixture because we are reflecting something? Um, so we're going to say that there is this reflected uh, ray and that reflected ray, we get it by using a reflect uh, and we reflect the direction. Direction is like the original, uh, the original uh, ray that we shoot uh, where ray tracing this sphere and we reflect it against the surface normal we got from uh, these calculations uh, of intersection. So we get the surface normal of the sphere, you already know that. Uh, and this reflected ray, now we need to figure out where this reflected ray shoots. Uh, since we don't have any other objects in the scene right now, we're gonna make uh, another sphere or, or another uh, object in the future. We just wanna reflect the surrounding area, right? So the easiest way to do this is by just saying, well, the color you get from reflecting, it's actually the uh, the color you get when you try to get the color map with the, the, this direction. It's actually R, G, and B values we are interested in. The alpha component is not, we don't care about it, but and that's the reflected color. Cool. We're still not affecting our sphere because we're not b mixing this color with anything. So the, the easiest way to, to, to make this work right now is cool. Leave the Fong stuff here. Like do the Fong stuff here. So that's going to cause some um, specularity in terms of lighting and so on. But the reflected part use the material specularity and blend the color of the material and uh, blend the color of the sphere and whatever it reflects first. So I can say sphere.color or uh, not, let's not say that. Oh, well, we can say that or we can say, uh, yeah, we can say sphere.color equals 
reflected color. And we need to mix it with something. And there is a mix function. And we can say, well, mix this here color with reflected color. And let's say we just go with 0 0.5. And I'm going to compile it now, and we're going to see our first reflections, hopefully. Boom. There you go. We have some reflections happening. Um, so what's happening now? Uh, let's see. We should be seeing this basilica thing. Yeah, we are seeing the other side of the basilica, if I'm not mistaken, behind, that's actually behind this uh, sphere. That's what we are uh, seeing at this point. Yeah, exactly. Uh, actually, I will change this. Uh, I don't I don't like how this looks. Let's let's see. Let's see when we change this. Yeah, the basilica is nice, but I think there is better cube map that that yeah, this one is better. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, one more thing: if we want to mix these two colors before uh, doing these form calculations, and if we if we want to mix them so it follows the specularity of this uh, sphere, we just say material dot uh, specular, and that should do the trick. If we do if we decrease the specularity, and all of a sudden we are not uh, getting so much uh, reflected color as we uh, would is if it was more specular. So specular means this, non-specular means this, zero means absolute and nothing, right? So now we have, a, like in this case, we have a red sphere that's reflecting something and in, 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 in case of this, we have a sphere that really doesn't, it's so reflective uh, that it only reflects all the colors around it. Uh, and I'm gonna leave it like this for now because I think it looks cool. Um, so right now we have a sphere that reflects its surrounding in its entirety. And what we're going to be doing in the next tutorials, I, I wanted to keep this one shorter and I will probably keep the future ones as well shorter, below 20 minutes if possible. Uh, we're going to be covering, we're going to be covering, uh, we're going to be placing another sphere in the scene. Uh, and we're also going to be playing with some um, uh, fight maps. So we're going to be applying textures to spheres and you can, you will see some granulations uh, of of the surface you're going to see how the surface is textured and how it um, how the light bounces from that sphere in different ways it's funny when i when i look at this scene i always remember there was this uh, like when first the graphic uh, 3d graphic ca graphic cards started uh, going out and i remember i got my voodoo 3d graph gpu in 19 something um, uh, they always had these benchmarking programs which you could spin and they they had this um, uh, uh, ray tracer that looked pretty similar to this one. So when I see a fully reflective um, uh, sphere, uh, it just reminds me of that super nostalgic. But anyway, uh, hopefully you liked this uh, tutorial. It, I tried to keep it as simple as possible. Now you know how to reflect off surfaces and you also know how to control how much you reflect and how much you don't reflect. Uh, you still don't know how to use textures and apply them to certain objects like a sphere and you still don't know how to uh, make this light scatter a bit uh, and you also don't know uh, diffractions so all of those areas are something i'm going to be tackling as we proceed further uh, and i really hope you're going to like it i hope you stay tuned uh, if you like the tutorial please press like and subscribe uh, i will be super grateful and until the next time please do stay safe and join me.